my name is Melissa with Golian Homestead, and welcome to my channel where I focus on homesteading skills, self-sufficiency, and resilience. And today I want to talk about being prepared and a little plan I have to get home. Okay, Kona doesn't like it when I sit on the floor. She likes to hang out with me and she thinks it's playtime. But today I wanted to talk to you about being prepared and <laughs> being prepared. All right, that's enough. Being prepared, especially in light of everything that's happened down south in the past few weeks. Now, I have a get home bag that I keep in my car. And I wanted to talk to you and just share with you a little bit about why I do that and what is in my bag. It is fall, and so this bag has been packed for summertime. Now that we're going into the winter months, it's time for me to flip that into some winter gear. And I already threw a few things in this morning, and then I thought, why not do a video to share with you guys, to share with you guys why I have this in my car and what the purpose of it is. So a lot of times, if you watch prepping videos, which I would not consider Steve and I preppers necessarily, but we prepare ourselves for something that would happen in our household like illness if one of us would have to quit our jobs or if one of us would lose our jobs. So we have a year's worth of food here in our home and probably more than that really, but a year Steve and I could eat comfortably for a year in our home. And then if we needed to share that with our kids and grandkids, we could thin that out a little bit for sure. So that is something that we do. We've been working on that for a few years now. Last year, I think it was about two years ago, I decided I wanted to try to get a year's worth of food in our home. And I did that pretty quickly, but now I feel like I've got a year's worth of comfortable eating in our home. Like we've got lots of options. We have lots of different options and backup supplies when it comes to food. So we're in good shape when it comes to that. But what I wanted to talk to you about is my get home bag. So my get home bag is in my car basically because I do not work close to home. Steve actually works about 10 minutes away from here. So if he had to head on foot to get home, he could probably get home in like an hour. For me, I work farther away. And so for me, it could be more like a whole day for me on foot to be able to get home. And so Steve and I started discussing this and thought this would be a great idea, a great way to actually be prepared is for me to have a get home bag in my car. So I'm gonna go through what's in my get home bag and then what I'm gonna switch out for the winter months right now. Now my get home bag, includes some things that are actually in my car as well. So the very first thing I'm gonna share with you is I have these, they're emergency thermal blankets in my car. This is in the console right next to me in case I would get stuck in a snowstorm or be someplace where I was, I don't know, get stuck in my car. I mean, you hear about people that actually get stuck in a creek, they run off the road, I mean, I don't anticipate any of those things happening, but these thermal blankets actually retain 90% of your body heat and they are waterproof and windproof. So they would also be a great thing to use if you're going to be hiking home or hiking somewhere and you need to keep yourself dry and warm, these would be a great thing to have. And I think there's two in here if I remember right, but I keep it in the console next to me in my car. So if I would somehow get lodged in my car, I would be able to pull those out easily. And I would should be able to get to them even if like my car flipped upside down or something. I know these are extreme cases, but it's just a way to be prepared and, and a way to have something in case of an emergency. Now, if I would have to go off on foot, I would actually just take this out of my car and throw it in my bag and take it with me. So this is in the console of my car. All right, so let's go through the bag and talk about some things that are in my bag and the purpose behind them. So I have a roll of toilet paper because every girl needs a roll of toilet paper. It's the best thing. Plus I have another roll of toilet paper 
only because I had it from vacation and I just left it in there in a side panel in the very back of my hatchback. I've got like a net area that I can keep stuff in and there's another rule in there. One thing I would say about this is this is probably more than what I really need, but I could use it for some other things if I would need to use that. Like I could mark my, if you're trying to place markers, you could tie this around a tree or something. So that would be something to consider. I mean, I would prefer to have something more dur durable, but it would be something I would have. But you can take the cardboard out and flatten it. And that's what I did and put it in a plastic bag and I keep it in my book my book bag, I keep it in my bag. Now these, some of these things are some comfort things that I probably don't necessarily have to have, but they're just things that I keep in my get, my get home bag for, you know, just for comfort. So I have a travel deodorant, which I know is probably not necessary, but I have a um, little container of Tylenol. Actually, acetaminophen actually could do a smaller container of this if I wanted to get more in here or put this in a plastic sack of some sort. I could do that. I've got Neosporin for any kind of injury. Toothpaste, not really necessary, but I do have toothpaste. And I have an instant hot pack right here in case I would need a hot pack for some reason. So it's one of those ones that you squeeze and it gets hot. So if I would have an injury of some sort, this would be a great thing to have on me as well. Now these heat packs, these are those hand warmers. They're pretty great to have. You can use these for an injury. You can use these for, to put inside your shoes if you're um, cold. And you can also put them inside some gloves if you have them, if it's in the cold temperatures. But in the summertime, these are great if you have an injury and you need a heat pack for an injury. This is another great thing you can use in place of one of these hot packs if you don't have those available. Plus those hand warmers are pretty cheap and they're pretty compact, so they're easy to carry. Okay, so then I have a cell phone. Now this is not a working cell phone, but I have a reason for this cell phone. So the reason I have this cell phone is, first of all, in my car, I've got two charging cords, a charging cord that works with this cell phone and a charging cord that works with my other, my other Apple cell phone. So I would have two cell phones, one, one which is a working cell phone, and this is specifically for documenting anything I would need. So if I went someplace, didn't have cell service, but could find internet service, doubtful that that would happen, but I could use this for the internet. I could take pictures with this. I can keep notes with this. There's a compass on here. There's a flashlight on here. So there's a lot of other things on here. It wasn't really worth selling to me, but it was worth, and I just had it in the drawer. So I thought I would throw it in here. There are some things that I can do with this phone. And so in a case of an emergency, I would have an extra phone to do those types of things with me or for those kind of things if I would need to. Okay, I have three cliff bars. So I would have some food. Now, since I'm only a few hours away from home, typically this is the most time I am. I figured three cliff bars would probably keep me um, energized enough and give me enough calories and protein and energy to actually get home. That's really my goal with this. I actually switched this out every season. I just put these in here. These were left over from our vacation. I had protein shakes in here before. My suggestion would be not to do that because it got too hot in my car and they exploded and I had spoiled protein shake inside this and had to clean it all out. It was not pretty. <laughs> so I wouldn't do that if I were you. Um, I've got a packet of band-aids and some lip balm. All right, that's in that pocket. Now, I don't have this in here now. I've considered putting it in here. Do you have a, so a Sawyer straw? filtering system that we use when we go hiking and it's in my hiking pack. I could actually put that in here as well. That would be something else I could use, but I almost always have a big container of like this of water in my car. Plus I've got a couple extra bottles of water in my car. So I feel like that would be something I should probably add, especially in the summertime, just because you can work off a lot of water when you're in energy and you need water. The one thing you can't live without is water, but you can live without food longer than that. So um, that would be a, high, a good suggestion would be to put some 
water a water straw on there if you know don't know what that is it is um you can get on probably google sawyer s i think it's s a w y e r i believe and they had a filtering system that actually is about this big and you can actually draw water up from a creek and run it through that filtering system it kills like something like 96, 98% of the bacteria. So it's a great, and we've used it plenty of times on hikes. It's a great system to have. And pretty much if you get one of those and stick it in your pack, you'll probably never have to replace it because it lasts a really long time. All right, in this little plastic bag, I have some more can warmers. I have um, some N95 masks just in case something would happen, especially if there was a terrorist attack of some sort, I feel like that would be a really good thing to have. And then I've got a little um, box of matches. Sorry, Kona, it really feels unnecessary to help me today. <laughs> Whenever I'm on the floor, that's what she's like. All right, then I have a paper in one of my sheet, in one of my um, little plastic bags here that has emergency contacts in case someone would find me and I was not able to express to them what, who to contact. But it also has contacts for me as well because all of my contacts are saved in my cell phone. So if I would happen to lose my cell phone and come upon somebody that could help me, then I would have phone numbers that I could call my emergency contacts. And these are all my immediate family members. And so I think that's another great idea. Um, I've got a couple of pens to go with that. A trash bag, because again, you can use a trash bag for a lot of different things. You can create a tarp with that. You can actually put it around you to keep you dry. There's just a lot of things that you can do with a tarp. I have some extra Ziplocs. And then I also have some, uh, they, when I ordered those um, heat blankets, they sent me some bonus heat blankets, which were a little bit smaller, and those are also in here. So I have a couple of um, a couple of packages of those, which are great, especially if Steve's with me, because right now this is really just packed for me. But if I am with somebody or I come upon somebody, want to help somebody, then I've got that in my pack. And then just a rubber band for you never know what you might need a hair tire we're being for. All right, so I know that this is not as advanced as some people's packs, but this is what works for me. I really love that um, I've come up with this. Now, this is summertime. I have a pair of old summer like sandal slash tennis shoes in here. Bought these, hardly ever wore them, but they actually work for both tennis shoes and sandals. But it's not really a good time of year to be doing that, using these. Um, I probably am gonna take these out and maybe see if I can find a closed pair, closed toe pair of shoes that I can put in here and something that would, I have some old tennis shoes in there that I think would be good for that. They're just tennis shoes I don't normally wear, but they would be good for just getting myself home. And then I also have a emergency um, clothing. And so for a girl, here's a couple extra pens in here. I've got a, I also have a post-it notes, so I have some paper, a pad of paper in case I would need it. I've got a long sleeve shirt that's an all weather shirt. I have some leggings, I will keep that in there. I have an extra sports bra, which is a great thing to have. I have a tank and shorts. So I'm gonna take the tank and the shorts out. I actually think I'm gonna find a sweatshirt and maybe a warmer pair of leggings because these leggings or an extra pair of jeans, these leggings are summer leggings, but they would be good to keep in here so I could actually layer my clothing if I needed to get home in the winter months. Okay, so some other things that you could consider putting in your pack if you do not have them, and that would be a flashlight. I don't have a flashlight in here because I have two phones, two cell phones that actually have flashlight capability. A compass, I don't have a compass in here because I have two cell phones that have compass capability. So those are two things that could get you home. Another thing would be a city or state map wherever you're, wherever you're located because a lot of times we're using interstate roads. You probably would not be hiking on the interstate to get home. You would probably have to take some back roads or side roads, neighborhood roads. And so it would be really good if you had a city map. I don't have that in here, but that is actually a plan of mine is to get really a state map that actually would help me with that. Um, considering the, the locations I go, or possibly I know kind of where my territory is and where I'm at most of the time. 
So maybe getting a city map of Indianapolis, Bloomington, Newcastle, that kind of thing, and throwing it in my bag so I would have it. The other thing to consider, especially if you're a single woman, and men could do this too, is some personal protection of some sort, whatever that might be. So if you own a pistol, a pistol is a great thing to carry. Many women carry a pistol. You could carry a pistol, or if you carry one in your purse, you have it with you and you just want to put some extra ammunition in your bag, you could absolutely do extra ammunition in your bag so you just have it ready to go. Um, a knife would be good. Um, I also think a knife would be good not only for personal protection, but also for if you would need to use it somehow to protect or use it somehow to actually um, like camp or you know, cut something, like if you needed to cut a piece of rope or something like that. If you're trying to get yourself home, there are some things that you might need. Now, I'm a very outdoorsy person. I've hiked and camped my whole life, so most of those things come very naturally to me, but if that is something that you are used to doing, you should probably do some research on some safe, safe ways for you to hike and camp and things that you should put in a pack to get yourself home. I just know what I felt like I needed for the for comfort to get me home. I can pretty much get home on foot. I can hike for a long time. I, I'm used to hiking, especially on flat ground. Flat ground is not a problem, and we have pretty flat ground here in Indiana, so I'm not worried about that. But personal protection, I think, is important, and especially if you're by yourself as a woman. So whatever that might be, it can be a you know a um, a pellet gun. It can be a pistol. It can be um, may spray, if you bear spray, may spray, something like that would be fine. If you have bear spray, you probably could just throw that in your bag, even though there's no bears <laughs> and you wear clothes. Um, and then a knife would be good too. So those are some things I would like to put in my bag. I know that there are a list of things that people have and suggest that you take with you if you have a bug out bag. This is not really a bug out bag. This is a get me home bag. It's in my car to help me get home. So I've got a couple of other things in my car. Oh, is my backup battery. Now this backup battery has a flashlight on it as well. So you can use the flashlight if you need, but it is something that can be charged in my car, but also has a solar battery pack as well. So this is a great thing to keep with you. It is a little bit slow to charge, but because it has a hook on it, I can actually hook it onto my pack and let it charge as I'm hiking, which is awesome. Um, the other thing is too, is I can keep it charged in my car if I want to. I can keep, I can plug it in to charge it so it has a full charge on my way out. Now, it has a full charge right now. It's actually showing that it's, it's, it's lighting up right now because it senses the sunlight and is already trying to charge. It's a pretty good little battery. You can get these anywhere, Amazon has these. You can also get one that has a crank radio, emergency radio, so that you can check into any local stations so that if there's something going on, you can kind of keep in touch with what's going on, especially if the cell towers are down. We do have one of those, but I choose not to keep that in the car because I have it here in our emergency station in our home. Okay, so I wanted to talk about my winter clothes that I just went went into my closet and picked out some things that I think would work fine for just getting myself home. Now, if the weather was cold, I would most likely have a coat in my car. The other thing I forgot to tell you is that I have a rain jacket that is stuffed in a side pocket in my car just because sometimes I need a raincoat when I'm out and about. So I do have a raincoat with me too. It's a zip up raincoat with a hood. It is not insulated, would not really keep me warm, but it would at least keep me dry. And that's an important thing if you're trying to get home in cold, wet conditions, keeping yourself as dry as possible will actually keep you warmer than if you're wet and cold, of course. So um, so, okay, so I already kind of went through my bag. I grabbed another pa pair of thick winter leggings, but this I would probably put over these leggings if I would need a change of clothes. Now, this is only an extreme situation. I would probably be in some type of clothing that would be appropriate for the weather because I'm in my car traveling around, but I might not have appropriate shoe wear. And so I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep two different pairs of shoes 
in my bag. So I am going to go ahead and keep this tennis shoe that I talked about, which is kind of like a sandal. It's kind of open, but it's got a closed toe. It's a good hiking shoe. So this would be really comfortable, really good, especially if I'm already dry. Then I'm going to throw in some wool hiking socks, which I could wear underneath this. That would keep me completely dry. It would be completely great if I didn't have appropriate shoe to wear at the time. And then I've got some waterproof boots here that are just little ankle boots. They're actually more of a rain boot, but I don't wear them very often. And so these would be really a great thing for me to throw in my bag so I would have them as well. So I would have something to keep my feet dry and then a sweatshirt. Um, just an old sweatshirt that I hardly ever wear, but I found it in my closet. So it's a good thing to keep in here as well. So I wanted to review some of the things that I'm putting in my pack for the winter months. And I did want to talk a little bit about my pack. My pack is not a fancy pack at all. It's not a day pack. It's, well, it is kind of a day pack. It's just a packable backpack that I purchased off of the Amazon. It was very inexpensive. I think I spent $15 for it. It it actually packs into a very small little like like bag that you can throw into your suitcase. But I still have plenty of room in this backpack to pack more stuff in here. So if I had stuff in my car that I really felt like I needed to pack in here, I could do that. So real, and it's very, very lightweight. So it's very important for you to have your pack be lightweight because the more you put in your pack, the more you have to carry, the slower you are, and the more calories it's going to take for your, um, out of your body as well. So one thing I would say that might be a good idea is for me to have maybe a few other nutritional options in my bag. I only have those three cliff bars. I did have energy bars and, and, um, protein shakes, but talked about the protein shake issue earlier. So I might try to find something that is not going to go bad that I could keep in here for a few months. Cause I probably, it's October, so I probably will not revisit this bag again. This bag's gonna go in my car, goes in the trunk of my car, and I'm not gonna revisit this bag again until most likely spring, unless I use it. <laughs> if you have any suggestions on things that I can put in my get home bag, please let me know. I love to take suggestions from other people because this is how I've learned is by watching other people and reading other people's comments and I follow a lot of preppers out there just because I'm trying to prep for something that might happen in our own backyard. So, and when I talk about prepping, I'm talking more about prepping for an emergency, like I said earlier, that would happen in our own home. But if you're out and about, it's very possible that we could have a terrorist attack. I mean, 9-11 did happen when people were out and about during their day. So we can't be for sure that that wouldn't happen. And we have a very scary election coming up so you don't know what's going to happen during that time so it's good to be prepared for that also there can be a um, tornado there can be a flash flooding like what just happened down south there's all kinds of reasons to be prepared to be able to get back to your base so we hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to so miss any of our upcoming content we hope you're having the best day bye